This is a VoiceThread um, presentation, and it's going to be used in, to help us to uh, revitalize our online discussion boards. You see here VoiceThread, just go to VoiceThread.com, get an account there, and here I'll just show you about how to upload text and graphics, and have some screenshots here. It's very simple, just click Upload, and then you just go ahead and upload a presentation or some slides, and here are some student comments. I agree that adults and children both desire to control their learning. I have found the necessity of having control in my own learning play out in my professional life. Recently, my manager emailed me to state that I would be responsible for supporting a new software application and that I needed to register for two training courses within the week. My manager never asked if I had an interest in learning about the application or assessing if software development correlated to my personal goals. I don't see the... I think adult learners learn best when they do have some control over their own learning. Early in the chapter, I wrote a note off to the side about teacher in-services. That sometimes as teachers, we get these required in-services and, and it doesn't seem to apply to us and it's a waste of time and it creates kind of a bad attitude. Um, then towards the end of the chapter, they talked about democracy and being allowed to vote and how it has its pros and cons, but we all do feel better when we feel like we have a little bit of say in what we're doing. I am of the opinion that the human resource developer's primary focus is to increase the performance and requirements of the organization by developing its workforce. I also agree with I think it's an interesting question. Um, in my general position is that in certain instances adults need to be in control of their own learning like whenever they're choosing what type of education to actually get. However, there is the workplace and in the workplace there are certain things that you're going to have to know and you can't um, expect an adult to look at it and say, well, I just don't think I want to learn that when it's something that it's required knowledge. So, I mean, it, it's really situationally dependent. So here I just want to show you about uploading some media that you have on your device, on your computer. And here's an example of what it would look like. Hello, students. I just want to give a little instruction on how you um, will use the voice thread. Basically, I just want you to listen to the video. Just push the play button here. Listen to the video. And um, at the end, make some comments, either using the keyboard or if you want to go ahead and use your in input uh, microphone on your computer, feel free to do that. And just as you think through what he's saying, commenting about the future of education and a new generation of teachers, how's that going to affect learning? How's it going to affect education at all levels, not just at the... Um as many as a million teachers retiring around the country over the next four, five, six years. It's a baby boomer generation coming out. Our ability to attract and retain great talent over these next four, five, six years is going to shape public education for the next 25 to 30 years in our country. So how do we get that next generation of smart, committed, passionate young teachers who uh, this is not, this is second nature for, this is not a foreign language, this is not something that scares them, this is how they have grown up. There's a huge opportunity there and we want to take full advantage of that. It is not just a generational thing, there are teachers who are 50, 55, 60 who totally embrace this, who get or lead the charge. Others might be a little bit more reluctant or a little bit more defensive, but it's really about a teacher's attitude and mindset. And I think all of us to be effective in anything we do, you and you, your job, me and my job, we all have to be learning, we all have to be growing, and you see great teachers of every age, every background embracing that, that challenge and that opportunity. It's not the technology itself that's driving the improvement, it's adults in the building behaving differently together. I, I, wager heavily that that's what's really making a difference. So it's creating the time and space for adults to figure out how they come together to use the technology to help drive instruction and to help students uh, dramatically improve. Hi everyone, this is Misha Slade and I'm going to comment on the new generation of teachers video clip that we just watched um, in regards to technology and the use of technology. Um, I feel like technology 
creates limitless opportunities and options for students and for teachers. I think teachers can now I think there are many different factors that play into this uh, question and this discussion. Uh, one being the fact that we, this is an online learning tool we are using right now. And I think it's really awesome that we can do this. Um, in fact, this class, having so many different people from so many different places, is what education is kind of turning to, if you think about it, because we don't have to physically bring people to this college or to this university to have them fill up a class, we can just Now for those of you who want a little bit more advanced, you can get this free YouTube downloader called Wondershare and it will save them as flash videos. You just put the URL into their uh, search engine and then you once you get that, you can um, go into your uh, file manager and upload it just like you do the text or um, slide presentations and upload it to video as a flash video and then you can comment on it. Another really cool feature is to create multiple identities so you can uh, comment on more than one um, uh, slide to multiple uh, participants. Here's some examples of what that looks like. Then you also have some options within uh, VoiceThread for publishing, playback, and as well as for embedding. Here are some of the playback options. You'll want to be careful on what you select and then always make sure you hit the Save button for um, publishing. And once again, who you allow to comment. You need to moderate the comments before allowing them to be posted. Here's the embed code. So you can use that for your course management system or for a blog or a social network. Uh, very simple to copy and paste into a course management system. Uh, through the HTML feature and uh, pretty good process there and then look like this with the YouTube and then a voice thread and participants making comments. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation.